70 years. They were exiled in 586. They were beginning to start rebuilding the temple 552, and they dedicated the new temple in 516, exactly 70 years from the, uh, from the time it was destroyed. And that's 516. Uh, that's when they started building it, but they were so interrupted. Shmero stopped it for a while uh, during that period. And he stopped it during the, kept on the stopping and going, stopping and going. So after 516, how many years is this with, with the... Well, the first, the base of Mikdash lasted 400, the second base of Mikdash lasted 420 years. For 420 years, the second base of Mikdash lasted, he had over six, uh, 300 scorn in Godot. Now, Yochanan, uh, uh, Yochan Kohen Godot, lived after uh, Shimon Atzani. And he was for 80 years as a coin Gogol because he came in and he walked, came out alive. At the end of 80 years of being the coin Gogol, he became a free thinker, one of these holistic Jews. So you should understand that there's always a possibility of a person regressing. It's a very uh, thing. So this is a very, this is an open wound of Judaism. So this is when it began. How many hundred years after? Finish Shalom. I said that 516 was the dedication of the second yes. temple. Yes. How many years after that? And and, and this is about 200 years later. So 200, 250 years later. So about 300, about somewhere around 275. After the Hashpanoim conquered, re-liberated Israel, they were free for another 209 years until the second temple was destroyed. So you can figure that out was free, considered free, even though it was under Roman domination? The free first, and then it became later. Well, the 209 one. years from then until the second temple was destroyed. That's right. That's what it's... That's, two, six, that's about 50... All right. Yeah. All right. Okay, whatever it is. All right, do you have it? All right. Now, read good now and enunciate the words properly, please. What bottom? Please? This here. The bottom of your... Uh, I am all of, of the first side. Whatever that means, oh, it could have been something else, but the page was taken. But it's probably they just uh, copied it from uh, something else. But uh, it seems to be all on olive, and I don't. Maybe maybe it was somebody that. It's something. initials of somebody. Initial, maybe initials of oh. somebody. I really don't know. I really don't know. I could just uh, guess, but uh, that's about all. And the transgressors of the law, and they they said, the persuaded man is saying, let us go and make covenant. You want from the beginning, or? No, don't repeat. All right, but I didn't explain that. All right, that's all right. Mr. Bruno, will you You continue? didn't explain that. This is what they wanted to be like the Goyim. Why did they say many evils have befallen us? That's they, because that's what the Goyim, that's what the conservative reformer now say. You're making, uh, you're making trouble for us. What uh, specifically were they referring to? They're referring to that we're, we're living different than the, than the Goyim. We keep Shabbos, they don't keep Shabbos. We don't we eat kosher, they don't eat kosher. What are the specific evils they're talking about there? They used to the, the evils that they have they are no they longer they are no longer they're considered a special people. And they don't like to be considered a special people. What what but does this, do you have read anything that says about the evils that fell? Like if like, you will let us read it, we'll read it. Go ahead, go ahead read it. And the same was good in the eyes of God. After the ordinance of the Gentiles. And they built a place of exercise in Jerusalem according to the laws of the Gentiles. And they made themselves uncircumcised. They told In other words, they kept on violating all the laws of the Torah, just like they're doing nowadays with the, these uh, modern conservative reform. Is that exercise a play or what? Yes. They, they is, that, to, is that gambling? Is that a stadium? Like the, the Greeks used to go and emphasize their... Or, or whatever they did. They did all the things that the Goyim were doing. They stopped to circumcise their kids, everything. All right, read on. And was after that they had smitten in Egypt, they turned in 140 and 30, and went up against Israel into the sanctuary, and took the golden altar around the face of the temple, and the scale. And he made a great slaughter, and spoke very presumptuous. And there came great mourning upon Israel, in every place where they were. All the house of Jacob was closed. Now what does that mean? It means that the Goyim robbing the Jews, they were violating their women, they were doing everything possible to make their lives miserable. They were taxing them, they were confiscating their property, they were making their lives miserable. And Jacob was conquered Egypt beforehand, it says here? Or? Yeah, he fought against them. They would fight and then they blamed the Jews for everything that happened. And then they conquered, they conquered Israel? Was he, he was already conquered, but he wanted to go and make, them, make them like all the other peoples of the world. 
like uh, the, uh, the other story we were in, or read up. And the city, that they should follow, they should refrain the set, and should leave their sons uncircumcised. That means that they should not keep Shabbos and Yom Tov, they should not uh, practice Milo, and they should go and eat right. not kosher foods, and everything possible to, to make themselves not observing God. They made these kind of laws on them. They were not supposed to study Torah or everything. It works. Go ahead. And on the 15th day of Kislev, they were built an abomination of this. And in the cities of Judea, on every side, they built idol altars. And at the doors of the houses, and all to the idols. Pagan. Huh? And they rent in pieces the books of the law and fire. They burnt up every, uh, anything that uh, got to do with Torah and Mitzvah. They burnt up everything. The same thing did in the Middle Ages with the, uh, with the Catholic Church. The, 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 the government? The government. The Greek government or the Yes, Central? Greek government. First you had Jews that were not faithful. And then you had the Greek government compiling uh, it. So there was any Jews that were trying to be observed, be a Jew, it wouldn't let them be. Constantly making their life miserable. The Torah says, we read something here that happened so many, you know, over 2,000 years ago, and we have the same Torah, Salah Yom, to the present day. So we have to understand who our friend is God, nobody else. And if we're not faithful to God, we don't have anybody else that's going to read on. It's a very great tragedy when you lose your liberty. You think, but the thing is this, everything happens for a reason. The reason that all this happened is because they went away from Torah and Mitzvahs. So this result that came to oppress the Jews. When the, the, in the modern times, in the early 1800s, the German Jews, uh, many of them, went away from Torah and Mitzvahs. And they uh, invited others to do that. Until a point came that became Rosa Hitler, who murdered over six million Jews. This is media, connected media. God will not permit Jews to go away from Torah Mitzvah. That's our commitment. And this leads one thing to another. The Jews go away, then the oppressive going fall on the Jews. There's nobody protect. That's the reason why we have to go and be faithful, because if we want God to our protection, we need him. No question about it. We in turn have to be faithful to his Torah Mitzvah. There's no other way. And the same cycle goes over and over again. You book the book, read the book of Shoftim, of Judges, time and time again. The same thing happened over and over again. Is there any wonder that it happened again? Nothing to wonder about. It's happened over and over again. How many times do you have to get the message? And this is a stupidity of the highest order that you don't realize. If you put your finger in the fire, you're going to burn it. Every single time. So this is something that unfortunately people don't understand. All right, sir. He was a coin. Oh, what he showed was the coin of Jochen Cohen Godel, the one that went away. His son was. And he had five sons John, who was his surname Gaius, Shimon, who was called Thassi. And he saw the blasphemies that were committed in Judah and in Jerusalem. And he said, Woe unto me. Wherefore was I born? I see the destruction of my people and the destruction of the holy city all there when it was given into the hand of the enemy. Our beauty and our glory are laid waste, and the Gentiles have profaned them, and not exceedingly. And the king's co-officers that were enforcing the apostasy came into the city of Modin sacrifice. And the king officers answered and spoke to Mordecai, saying, Thou art a ruler and an honorable and a great man, in this city and strengthen your sons and brethren. Now therefore come thou first and do the commandments of the king uh, as all the nations have done. And the men of the kings that are in the house of the king's dominion hearken unto me to fall, in, to fall away each one from the worship of his father and have made choice to follow his commandments. Then will I my son and my brethren walk in the covenant of my father. Heaven forbid that we should forsake the, the law and the ordinances. We will not hearken to the king's word to go aside from our worship on the right hand or on the left. And when he had left speaking these words, there came and drew the sight of all the sacrifice and the altar heat according to the king's commandment. And Mattathias saw it, and his zeal was kindled, and his reins trembled, and his reins trembled, he shoot forth his wrath according to judgment, and ran and slew him upon the altar. 
and the king's officers who compelled men to sacrifice and he kindled at that time, he killed them at that time, and he pulled down the altar. And he was zealous for the law, even as Amar and Pius cried out in, in the city with a loud voice saying, who shall let him come forth after me? And he and his sons fled unto the mountains. And many that were sought after justice and judgment went down into the woods to dwell there, they and their sons and their wives, for the evil were multiplied upon them. And it was told the king, officers, and the forces that were in Jerusalem, the city of David, that certain men who had broken the king's commandments, and many pursued after them, and having overtaken them, they encamped against them, and set the battle in array against them. Now remember, I told you yesterday, if God forbid it should never happen again. A Jew is attacked on Shabbos and his life is in danger. He is permitted al to defend himself and to kill the person trying to kill him. He must violate the Shabbos and he must kill whoever is trying to kill him. It's a mitzvah. It's, not, it's an avera to allow yourself to be murdered and not to defend yourself. And you must violate the Shabbos to save your, your life. Because uh, that, uh, he has a din ve a person is trying to kill you. He's trying to kill you. You are permitted, al to kill him. And they said unto them, Thus far, come forth and do according to the word of the king, and you shall live. And they said, We will not come forth, neither will we do the word of the king to profane the Sabbath day. And they hastened to give them battle. And they answered them not, neither cast them then, who stopped up the secret place and say, Let us all die in our innocence, heaven and earth witness over us, that ye put us to death without trial. And they rose up against them, in battle on the Sabbath, and they died, they and their wives and their children and their cattle, to the number of a thousand souls. And Mattathias and his friends knew it, and they mourned over them exceedingly. And they took counsel uh, on that day, say, on the Sabbath day, let us fight against him, and we shall die, as our brethren died in the secret place. See, that's the Allah. These guys didn't plan they were killed? They, they did the law. They were Jews that wanted to do the right thing, but they didn't know the law. So that's why it's very important you know what the law is. You can't allow yourself to die when you really don't need to die. This is a problem. A lot of people really want to do the right thing, but never they don't know. Perhaps. I don't know. I wasn't there. All I know is that uh, they had committed suicide. Don't, I'm not going to make a judgment. First of all, I don't want to say anything bad about people that died out of Kiddush Hashem. The best they do, let them, let them lessen their rule and let them be what they are. But I'm telling you, Allah as it is. If God forbid it should never happen again, you are required, not only permitted, you're required to violate the Shabbos to protect your lives. No ways in the world that you can permit the going to murder you. Well, there again, well, I don't know all the details. Josephus, I think he described, described the whole situation. Josephus wrote, he was a Jew, and he wrote uh, a whole uh, conflict of all these battles at the time. <coughs> then were gathered together unto them a company of Hasidim, mighty men of Israel, every one that offered himself willingly for his law. And they mustered a host and smote sinners to their anger, and lawless men in their wrath, and the rest fled to the Gentiles for safety. Mattathias and his friends went round about and pulled down the altars and were prospered in their hands. His son, now have pride in you, you've gotten strength. And now, my children, be zealous for the law and give your life for the covenant of the fathers and, and receive great glory and an everlasting name. And you, my children, be strong and show yourself a man in the capital law, and therein shall ye obtain the glory. And you all shimmer your brother. Shimon, your brother, I know that he is a man of counsel. Give him, he shall be a father unto you. And do not uh, became the first king after the conquest. He has been strong and mighty from his youth, and shall be your captain, and shall fight the battles of the, of the people. And he blessed them, and was gathered to his fathers, and his sons buried him. Also glad was the battle of Israel. He got his people, great in array, protecting the army with his. He was like a lion in his beast, and as a lion well for us, seeking that of all his people. And he went about among the cities of Judea, and destroyed the ungodly out of the land, and turned away wrath from Israel. And he was renowned, of, and Apollonius gathered the area to fight against Israel. And Judas perceived it, and he went forth from him and slew him. And many fell, wounded to death, and the rest fled. 
and Saren, the commander of the host of Syria, heard say that Judas had gathered a gathering to the congregation of faithful men with him. And he made ready his chariot, and there went up with him also a, might, a mighty army of the ungodly to help him to take vengeance on the children of Israel. And he came near unto the going up of Beth Haran, and Judith went forth to meet him with a small company. And he discomfited Saron and all his people with the edge of the sword. And he pursued them in the going down to Beth Haran unto the plain, and there fell on them about eight hundred men. But the residue fled unto the land of the Philistines. And the fear of Judas and his brethren, and the dread of them, began to fall among the nations round about. Judas had gathered themselves together to stand for their lives, and his wrath was a great army. He commanded him to destroy and exterminate all the seed of Israel, and to divide his land unto the Gentiles. And Judas smote the captains of the host which was seized him, and the spirit of the Jews was in church, and they fought boldly, and they destroyed the army. And Israel had a great deliverance that day. And the next year, Lysias together three score of them chosen footmen and five thousand horse. And Judas went forth against him and smote him in discontent. Then Judas and his brethren said, Behold, our enemies are discomfited, dedicated afresh. All the army was gathered together, and he went up to Mount Zion. He saw the sanctuary laid down, and the altar profane, and the gates burned, shrubs growing in the courts, as in the forest, and the priest's chambers pulled out, and they rent their clothes, and made great lamentation, and put ashes upon their heads, and fell on their faces to the ground, and blew pride. And Judas chose blameless priests, such had pleasure in the law, and cleansed the holy place in his vessels, and altar, which the Greek had profaned with their abominations, and they built a new altar after the fashion of the former. And they searched for pure olive oil to light into the candlesticks, and they found but one flask of the high priest, and they knew then that the oil was clean. And there was a little flask of oil that would suffice only for one day's lights, Go ahead, no. whose glory dwelt within the temple, sent down his blessing, and the I have our burn for eight days. And those early in the morning of the five and twentieth day of the ninth month, which is the month of Kislev, the hundred and forty-eighth and eighth year, they offered sacrifice according to the Lord on the new altar of burnt offerings which they had made. And what time and what day the Gentiles profaned it, even on that day was dedicated afresh with songs and harps and lutes and cymbals. And all the people fell upon their faces and worshipped, and they gave praise unto heaven, which had given them good success. They kept the dedication of the altar, of the altar eight days, and delivered burnt offering sacrifice and deliverance and praises. And lit candles in all the houses, and all the windows, and all, and all the streets of the city. And Judas, and Judah, and his brethren, and the whole congregation of Israel, ordained that the days of the dedication of the altar should be kept in the seasons from year to year by the space of eight days, and the kind of lights in all the houses. And now I'm going to read you, I only have three copies of the, of the um, parish, but I'll, I'll grant those of you can re look in the uh, copy, we'll look at it. It's the third, uh, the third mission in the first chapter in the, the next of the top. I'll read the Mishnah, oh, excuse me, I'll read the Mishnah, and uh, I'll read the Rambam's explanation on the Mishnah. Now, of course, the Rambam lived uh, a little over 800 years ago. He was the chief rabbi of, of Egypt. He was one of the greatest Talmudic scholars we've ever had in, in all of Israel. There's a famous saying, says, Moshe, don't come to Moshe. From Moshe, until Moshe, met, and nobody rose up like Moshe up. So he was, in fact, one of the greatest we've ever had. And uh, there's no question about it that the Rambam was uh, just tremendous. And this is what he has to say about the third Mishnah in the first period, in the, in the first chapter. Uh, the Mishnah says, Antigonus, a man from Sofo, received the tradition from Shimon Tzatzarek. Shimon Tzatzarek, as I told you, was the Koen Godo during the time of Alexander Mukhtar. So now, right after that, this Talmud had two students that misinterpreted what he said. Boy Omer used to say, I'll tell you, I'm going to ask a cross. Don't be like, the people that uh, servants that serve their master on the condition to receive a tip, from Mas Kamakros. 
you should be like servants that serve their master on condition not to receive a sin. Let the fear of heaven be upon you. Rambam, Gimel. You have Gimel? Um, you look at Gimel, there's a Rambam. Pras. Pras, Pras, Pras uh, the, the tip is called a Gomel, what you pay. Asher Yikomel Odom, a person pays the Mamish Enolo Enolo Tobo Olav, Tobo Olav. He has no obligation to pay. In other words, it's a tip, it's not an obligation. Al Yasa Zer Al Derech said he does it because of kindness. Chanino, because he, he's being kind. Kamosha Omar Odom La Avdo, a person says to his a slave or a benol cotton, the small child, a small son, or the Ishto to his wife, Asali Kacha Kia Kach, you do this and this for me. If I take a look at dinner, I'll give you a, a silver or a uh, shnaim or two. Mezela, a hefrish, this is the difference between a share between pras and schar, between a tip and, and reward or, or, or wages are required. It's a kiaschar, he's a medin, it's a, what you pay wages is what the, you're required to give it as far as the law is concerned. Omar Zerah Chosid, and this pious Atana said, do not serve the uh, God, may be blessed, okay, in order that he should do good for you. In other words, people want, I'll do good for you, God, if you do good for me. But that's a very low standard uh, to do it. Chesed, they'll do kindness for you, with, and you'll have uh, hope for this type of, of giving back. But I won't do, you'll serve him because of that.